Here's another project that's kind of in the works. Uh, a while back, I saw on Pinterest, along with everybody else, I'm sure, this really cool project where this person, okay, I'm, I'm going blank on her name. I'll find it and I'll post the link somewhere. But she made, she got one of these vintage Rolodex things and she made what she called a Scrapodex. And she took the cards and she just did this fabulous little piece of art on the card, stuck it in her Scrapodex. And hers, I think, is now full of amazing little art cards. And, you know, of course, I instantly had to rush out and see if I could do the same thing. It took me quite a while to find one of these. I could find it really easy online for, you know, 20 or $30, but wasn't willing to pay that for an old used Rolodex. So I just waited around and finally saw one at a thrift store for 2 or $3. I think I paid for it. So I grabbed it. Um, it is the Rolodex File Junior metal with the uh, 3x5 cards. So grabbed it. It still has all of the, um, it came with all of these little plastic card cover deals and then the cards that were in it from the person who had it before. It still got all of their information stuff, which I think is actually kind of cool because they look, I don't know if they're old or just written by an old person. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Anyway. Here's what I've got. These monthly dividers, I had made also another idea I saw on Pinterest, one of those perpetual calendars, which is really cool. I love the idea and made it. It was great. Couldn't remember to use the silly thing, you know? You're supposed to have a little card for each day, and then whatever significant event happens that day, you just write the year, the event, and then each year you just, you know, keep it going. So it last for a long time, but I just could never remember to use it. But And it was not in a, the cards were smaller. They were not this size, so the dividers that I made for it are more narrow. I had to cut them down. But I don't care. I am just stuck them in here because I didn't really know what to do with them yet. Um, I may figure out something else to use them for, or I might just leave them in here as dividers, you know. Who knows? But that's where they're living for now. And what I'm doing with this um, is I haven't really sat down to intentionally make the cards for it. I'm just kind of making them as I have scraps to use up or as I run across stuff that I think, oh, you know, that's just the right size for these little cards. And a lot of what I do is um, I'll make the backgrounds. And these are from just cleaning my brushes out on them or if I've got paint blobs of paint on my scrap paper from you know when I'm painting backgrounds or whatever and if it's too much paint I don't want it to dry in a thick blob then I'll just you know take one of these cards wipe it up and then it makes these really pretty fun backgrounds and I can use these for um, backgrounds on some of the art cards or on the backs of the cards because, you know, I like my backs finished. So I'm going to make sure that the back of each art card that I make has um, something other than white and smeared paint and glue fingerprints on it because that's normally what they have. So I've got, I keep these stack of cards right here to clean up my paint and make backgrounds with. And then if I have extra images laying around or um, leftovers from another project, then I'll turn it into a card. And they're going to fit in here and they're just going to, you know, stack up and look awesome just like that girl on Pinterest someday. That is, if I don't get bored with it and quit halfway through, which is my M.O. We'll see. I did a Paris page and a art journal page and ended up not using that image. So that one went on the card. And this is another art journal page, leftovers. I think we're getting glare. Oh. And same with this one, more leftovers. 
in an experiment with making little paper flowers out of a punched out images. This was a few more Paris leftovers and then it had this sheet of hats laying around and thought, hmm, that hat's just the right size for her head. Let's see what happens. And it was cute. And then this spurred another idea, which I'm going to show you. These are some more leftovers. This one's not finished yet. I don't know what it's going to be, but that's a work in progress. But when I put this hat on this little woman here, which I thought was adorable, it was like the very next day, all my ideas dried up. They were just gone. I didn't know what to do. I had nothing to do. Nothing sounded good. Nothing looked good. Nothing was interesting. You know, I just, I just was having a little 24-hour dry spell. And I've been trying to do some kind of art every day and didn't want to, you know, break my routine. So I looked at this girl with her little hat and I thought, hmm, vintage images with hats. How fun would that be? So I spent several hours on the internet looking for hats, you know, that I could download for free and for legal. And that was not as easy as I thought it was going to be because most of the hats had heads in them and I didn't want hats with heads. I wanted headless hats because, you know, I already had the heads. So it took me a while to find the hats. Then I printed out a bunch of heads and I really like like the really somber, almost grouchy looking old vintage people, you know, cabinet cards with a funny hat. Doesn't that look like she's got a pimp hat on? I love that. See, that just makes me laugh. So I put a bunch of hats on these images and then I have this book that I can't remember if I bought it or my sister gave it to me. She gave me a whole bunch of really cool albums. But it's just a Goodwill or garage sale thing. It's probably a dollar. And I'm going to decorate it, make it look like a um, an old photo album. Maybe one of those Victorian albums, you know, with the big clasp. I might try to make it look like that. That would be cool. And I'm going to put these in it. And I've already, in fact, for a lot of them, I've already captioned them in my head, but I'm going to put captions under them, kind of like um, Ann Tainer captions, you know, something kind of humorous. But I'll show you some of these because they're kind of funny. There's her. She, that actually looks kind of pretty. She's got her hat on. Here's Dancing Girls. They look kind of like the village people's great-great-grandmothers. And these little boys, these, this is actually came out of a family photo album, so they're related to me in some way that I don't know. Check him out. Check out those rolls of fat and his little suspenders. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's hard that the picture has deteriorated terribly, and it's hard to see, but oh my gosh, the rolls are killing me. Too funny. And look at him. <laughs> I picked that out special for him. She looks like Cloris Leachman to me. Is it just me? No, she definitely looks like Cloris Leachman. And oh look, she is from, where is she from? Serbia or Slovakia or one of those countries that starts with an S like that. And it's, I put the yellow hat on her because, you know, so that she could blend in with the other Americans while she was here. And look at this guy. He's saying, just because a man crosses his legs, that doesn't mean he's gay. <laughs> and she, this is also another relative that I don't know who she is, but I just think she's beautiful. She's, I think she's a beautiful face. I wish I knew what she looked like when she smiled. I bet she was really pretty. And check her out. She looks like Holly Hunter. She's like Holly Hunter's great, great, great grandmother. And remember in um, Raising Arizona where Holly Hunter played the cop? Yeah. That's exactly what that reminds me of. And there's that girl. And this one. <laughs> She's funny too. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so easily entertained. Oh, and check her out. See, her caption will say something like, What? It matches my shoes. Uh-huh. This is Don Boyd when he was four weeks old. This also came out of our family photo album. I can't imagine naming my dog Don Boyd, but I think it's hilarious. And if we ever have another dog, I'm going to name him Don Boyd after this guy. And look at them. They're also family members. I'm not sure who. But they just look so... I don't know. It's not really angry. Just grouchy. That's it. They're grouchy. I think everyone at the turn of the century was grouchy. They look like it anyway. So anyhow, that is um, the idea I came up with when I had no other ideas. And I'm going to keep making them, work on the album, stick them all in there. And I will have just an endless source of entertainment for myself for when I get bored. Okay, that's it. The end.